Coming to you from sunny California and the Great White North. Get ready. We are breaking down the obstacles on the Armchair Ninja Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Friday, May 19th, 2017. My name is Rich, and joining me once again this week is Bijan. How are you making out? What's up, man? I'm feeling good. I am just so happy. I finally got muddy again this whole week. I, I did an OCR, and I'm feeling good. And special shout out to my brother, Ramin, who's kind of like your body type, Rich, and my girlfriend, Sarah. They both did their first OCR, and they killed it, man. Nice. I saw the pictures. It looked like they had a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Tons of fun. I did my own. I did a warped wall or variation of it. Uh, did some hanging rings and stuff. So they, they had some fun Ninja Warrior-esque obstacles out there. And uh, it was fun testing myself. I loved it. Build some confidence. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. And, uh, dude, I just very quick, like just for everybody to understand how badly I ate this entire week. Uh, on Friday, I ate six plates of pasta and four loaves of garlic bread to quote-unquote carbo load really i just want to be a fatty saturday i ate eight plates of sushi at sushi stop if you guys know in la it's like two dollars and 75 cents for whatever sushi rolls you ate one i had so many rolls of sushi no joking just destroyed that the next day for Mother's Day, I go to a buffet, have eight plates at the buffet of, like, meat, steak, pasta, crepes, all this, you know, just going ham on it. The next day, dude, I had, oh, gosh, what was it? A giant carne asada fries and a California burrito over here. Destroyed that. And then the next day, my final day of just eating junk food, I ate three Big Macs, a large French fry, and one of those like fancy burgers that they have at McDonald's because I haven't had McDonald's in years. All that destroyed it. Go to the gym today. Guess what? What? I lost five pounds. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 do, so I don't much. know what's wrong. <laughs> I don't Do you know, know what's what? wrong with my body. <laughs> my diet lately, honestly, like, like I didn't get an apple and a few crackers. Like I have been under the weather. I had a migraine that put me put my stomach out of commission. I missed work yesterday. So I've, I had like soup today. I've been eating just almost nothing. And and you're like just chowing down. I probably gained 10 pounds this week. <laughs> Dude, it's so, like our bodies just suck sometimes, you know. I, I don't want to be the skinny guys, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm back on it. I spent two hours at the gym today. I'm, I'm bulking back up, guys. But um, yeah, I just needed to talk about that because I've been going ham on food and I need to calm down. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, you work out like a monster, though. Yeah, yeah. I work out five times a week, or five days a week, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, that's the big difference between us, I would say. Not so much the diet. The diet is the diet's something else. <laughs> yeah. And to be clear, guys, I usually don't eat like that. Just after a competition, it's time to go ham. All right. So this episode, <laughs> to get back to Sponsored why we're Sponsored by here, McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we're going to be covering Team Ninja Warrior Episode 5, Season 2. Great episode. We had lots of fun watching oh, this one. Fantastic. And uh, we're also going to preview next week. We actually finally figured out dur- during near the end of the season, we figured out that we actually can see what teams are coming up the, the following week. So we'll get a chance to take a look at those and let you know what we think. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for that. I love previewing the next episode and being completely wrong. Well, that's the thing. So we've, we've joked a lot about the curse of uh, the Arm Carnage podcast. We've done pretty well this season. We're both one and one. I don't know if you realize. Yeah, that we're not. decent. We're decent, you know. Um, we'll see. I, I I don't know my team's chances in the finale. I'm still behind them, but man, <laughs> for to be in the finale to to get to all the way to the finals, like uh, clear the finale and get to the the relay in the finale, I feel like your entire team has to be like completely um, have no holes in it. And unfortunately, in this episode, I saw a lot of holes in my team. But um, we'll get to that maybe towards the end. But um, yeah. if they if they can clear some things up, you know, um, they they can go far. But it was it, this kind of was the episode where two teams putting a whole lot of pressure on their team captains. Yeah, that's that's putting it mildly. So let's go through what actually happened this episode because it's interesting if nothing else. Yeah. So we had four teams uh, as always. We had Team Alpha. That's Brent Stephenson's team. Carson's Fast Cats. That's Karsten Williams. Storm Team, that's Joe Morawski, 
And Woo. Flamingo with Alan Keneally. So Alan got his own team. That's cool. Yep. He needs to change that team name. But, you know, good for them. Yeah, it is. I mean, really? I mean, Storm Team, cool. Team Alpha is great. Um, yeah, I like both those. relevant, and they, they match up well and everything else. Carson's Fast Cats, uh, I don't know with that either. It, it's it's middling. It's meh. It's like, oh, geez. But it's it's not as cringe as Flamingos. <laughs> that, oh that one is painful. Yeah, I, I guess they couldn't do the Beast thing. It's the, the real life Beasts already took that, so they're they're a little stuck. There's much better teams. They can just be Team Let's Go if they want to. That one's pretty painful, but it's not as bad as Flamingo. <laughs> yeah. That's Carson's catchphrase for people who don't understand. I didn't know that. How did I not know that? He always shouts, let's go! I mean, I do that too. It's more, eh, I'm not going to go into that dynamic. But let's just say we look a lot alike. <laughs> so <laughs> it's more of that dynamic. But uh, yeah, he always says it. Hmm. I'll have to watch that now. I, I was saying that a whole lot over the weekend after every <laughs> obstacle. <laughs> Very similar to Carson. <laughs> um, all right. So taking a look at the teams, right off the bat, we had Team Alpha versus Carson's Fast Cats. So Brent's team is, no surprise, Casey Cottonzaro, and their third member is Dylan Gates. And on Carson's team, we have Kevin Klein and Joy Strickland, two names we weren't too, too familiar with. Yeah, but I'm I'm happy Kevin Klein got some love. I I I remembered him from A and W, and he's one of those people where it's like, oh, I've seen him, but I don't I don't really know him. He he did very well in this episode. He wasn't amazing, like oh my god, we need to remember this guy. But he definitely got some shine, and I feel like he's somebody that we're gonna be seeing over the next few years. And uh, yeah, he was he was good, especially for his size, right? He definitely stood out in his size um, as like a shorter guy, but kind of like a tank. Uh, and I yeah. always like seeing those types of guys because you don't you don't necessarily they don't look like the guys that are gonna like blow past everybody in speed. But uh, he did really well, in my opinion. He did, except for this first round that let's talk about uh oh boy kevin versus dylan that was uh an interesting fall i was a little worried about it for a second but it seemed like once i saw the way he entered the water you know upside down and backwards and and it was just a total mess coming off that ring of fire he, he actually seemed like he was okay but it, it was a nasty spill yeah very true it, it was one of those runs where it just ends prematurely and luckily we saw this at the beginning of the episode and we we like i i wasn't too worried because it's like okay i didn't really get to see what this guy is capable of but maybe we'll see later on you know yeah so that meant first point goes to team alpha so then we get to see joy versus casey casey by the way the unbeaten right also running a perfect record coming into this yeah episode. i did not know that she had an unbeaten record from last season good on her you know uh she always gets a lot of flack online but man she's casey cannonzaro is still a name and she's no joke guys and for her size she's a little speed demon that could you know and good for her you know screw the haters I, I i was really happy to see that she's still like you know in peak form and if maybe american ninja warrior isn't her thing where she's kind of um, not doing as well maybe team ninja warrior is her her thing yeah she does really well she like like you said she hits those ropes and she's going like she she doesn't slow down at all but <laughs> in this one here they they both had some trouble on the ring of fire right at the bat Casey almost fell on the tiles, like really came close. And then right behind her, Joy did the exact same thing and almost fell. Both barely caught themselves. But Casey was the first one to the wall and made it up without issue. So uh, like you said, she maintained that per perfect record. I, I don't know why she gets the hate that she does. I, I think over the past year, um, last season, maybe it's easier for like um, she might not get as flat much flack because they kind of relegated her more in the background in terms of screen time and gave more to Jesse Graff, which is warranted, you know, and Jesse Lipbrek and all the new new breed. So hopefully we get less of that. And she's still proving herself year after year that she's one of the top female ninjas. So I'm happy for her. And once again, got up that warped wall, man. Great to see. Yeah, I think it'll help that the it's spread out a little more now, right? She had the pressure of virtually all of the female ninjas looking towards her and all the young girls. Now it there's a few women that are doing so well that they none of them have to bear all that pressure. Jesse, to some extent, does, but not quite to the same level that Casey had to. Oh, yeah. Uh, so moving on, we have Carson versus Brent. Uh, and it was the big story for the episode was can Brent get redemption after having a bad season last year? 
Oof. And the uh, the answer is definitely no, no. He a definitive most definitely no. Not. So so this team, it, it's basically the opposite of what we were alluding to earlier, where with two teams like going off the backs of their of their team captain and like their team captain just like um, carrying the team on the shoulders. It's kind of like in this, it's the reverse where. And I, I'm really not trying to disparage Brent Simpson as too much because he's a really great guy in real life and he's very talented, but they they need a new team captain or something. Brent Simpson cannot be the team captain. He's just he he's unfortunately been the hindrance in two seasons now of the team, and it's more like his team is holding him him up rather than the reverse. I think he'd be much better suited as a supporting role in the team. He he can't go in these in these matchups against the the top ninjas anymore with speed. It's just not there. He had a brief shining moment there. I really thought he might pull it off because Carson was just flying through this whole episode. Carson was just on wings. And, uh, but Brent started making a crazy comeback at one point coming through those flywheels. I thought, Oh my God, Brent's going to actually catch him and pass Mm -hmm. him the way he was going. Uh, but he didn't end up doing it. Carson was just a beast. Yeah. I'm going to talk about Carson later because I think he's tied for my MVP tonight. I don't know, man. Brent keeps making small mistakes on every run he makes, and it co- it costs him. And um, it, it, it's hard to see, man, because this is a guy that was at the very top of the entire sport just a few years ago. He he definitely wasn't lacking or anything. He was he was doing great, and I think he'd do much better in in one of the relegated, um, I guess, supporting roles of the team. I think he'd do really well against matchups there. I, I think they just need to figure out on their team who who else should be the team captain. Yeah, it's possible. So that led to the tiebreaker, right? Because Carson had to win to push the t- for the tiebreaker. That meant that Carson was going against Dylan, uh, or at least that's what Alpha decided to do, which was a good choice. Very good. Very smart, yeah. Yeah. But Carson still blew through the course and won it easily. Like 42 seconds, had a great time. You know, and all I could think was like, imagine if he didn't get slowed up on the flywheels because that was he did get slowed down there both times. Uh, If he hadn't been slowed down there, I couldn't imagine what kind of time he would have had. Yeah, I mean, Carson is perfect for this type of competition, a track star in fantastic shape in the upper body, very long limbs. I mean, this is a guy that's built for this type of competition, and it really showed tonight. Um, Carson's really, like, uh, slowly been making a name for himself. He's not, he, he's more low-key, right? Like, we saw him in the competition with the, uh, oh, what is it, uh, the Salmon Ladder, right, Rich? Yeah. Yeah, and and we've seen him tonight just beast moding through through a lot of these. Uh, he's not a, a, in, as in your face as the Phoenix, you know, as Najee Richardson or or anybody like that. But he's low key been very much making a name for himself this year. Yeah, this was kind of a good standout year for him. In past seasons, they tended to focus on his mother, who was very entertaining on the sidelines. But Carson's showing himself to be entertaining and a really strong ninja. So good for him. So with Carson winning the day, that meant the Carson's fat cats were the winners of the round. And then we had Storm Team versus Flamingo. And they started with the women this time. We ha- got to see Lucy versus Alyssa. That's Lucy. Oh, sorry. Run through the teams here. Uh, Storm Team was Joe Morofsky, and he replaced the other two team members from last year. So he had Alyssa Beard and Josh Levin, which are... Two amazingly Fantastic. strong ninjas. Like, oh my god, like two of the best rookies from last season. Yeah, Josh Levin, as any everybody knows, I am incredibly high up on. He's one of my picks in the A and W fantasy draft, uh, to basically go all the way this year. I'm really high up on this kid. Um, very smart with his approach to the course. I'm glad that he's with Joe Morowski, who he reminds me a whole lot of. He's kind of like a young Joe Morowski in his approach to um, using a lot of the technique in, involved with the obstacles. Obviously, build there a little bit different. This guy's like a tank of beast. Uh, I didn't realize until this episode. Did, Rich, am I the only one? This guy looks like, screw, I know he's like really young. He's like 22. This guy looks like... 14 or 15 years old this kid looks like he's straight out of high school still like i'm like who let this little kid on the course <laughs> uh, anybody in their 20s looks like young to me now i can't tell a difference 14 or 24 it's the same yeah just it, it really hit me like watching him and in, in this particular race i was like 
This guy is so young. Uh, Alyssa Beard also, uh, very talented from last year, and I was I was really high up on her going into this episode. With that said, I'm, I'm so excited to see Lucy Romberg, because for people that don't know, here's a little trivia for you. She was, in many ways, the first female American Ninja Warrior. She competed in American Ninja Challenge, which is kind of like the precursor to A&W, she she's one of the OGs, the one of the very first uh, American female or the very first American and female um, representation, and she did really well for herself um, to a degree. And you know, I'm I'm excited to see her back. I I feel like they don't give her that that title enough or really like highlight it enough. But she she was there from way early, guys, and she, I'm just excited to see her. I don't know. Yeah, they tend to focus on her her movie career now with her. She's a stunt double for. Well, they said Ghostbusters. I know that. Yeah, because she's the. I think she's like what the heck is her name? Melissa McCarthy. I believe she's her stunt double. Melissa McCarthy. They look nothing alike. <laughs> her size. Are you sure it's Melissa McCarthy? I'm pretty sure. I, I can I can see like her being for um the chick from SNL or something. Yeah. Well. Let's. I'm going to put that out there. I'm not even going to double check the facts because I know someone that's going to double check that one for sure real quick because uh, I know Arsenet's a huge fan of Lucy's and follows everything she does. So we'll uh, we'll find out and I promise to correct it in the next episode if I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive that that is correct. That is crazy, dude. They look nothing alike. <laughs> yeah, wigs and bodysuits and whatever else is needed, I guess. I guess. Um, but yeah, so she is, she's fantastic. She was the first woman, as I found out last season, the first woman to actually complete the jumping spider before Megan Martin had on American Ninja Warrior. And it's just fantastic all around. We didn't get to see a lot of her this episode. It was not exactly a shining episode for her. There was a lot of like top ninjas in this episode that didn't do so well, honestly. Yeah, it was kind of weird, right? But it, when that happens, we get another like another group of competitors that take that slack. So we got a lot of young blood uh, making names for themselves. And I'm kind of happy to see that in many ways. With that said, I mean, the top ninja is still Joe Morosky. He He's showing why he's still at the top of the heat, man. Yeah, I feel bad for Joe. I, this is the second season in a row where Joe is just giving everything he has to win every matchup he's in and he just can't get a team together that's to help him get there i mean i mean it it, mm-hmm. it works out in the end but i mean come on like joe's legs gonna be tired from carrying that team yeah and we'll get to it later but they were really put in a tough position in that relay i they also made history just for everybody knows but uh, <laughs> they they got they got some major um Things that they need to clear up on that team. Uh, where are we in this episode? Let, let's oh, keep going. We're we are like all over the place. So uh, Lucy versus Alyssa. This was like two very strong ninja competitors. I was all excited to see how this goes. And they both get hung up with the ring of fire and both fell on the disc mount. Hot mess. Absolute hot mess. Like that was not a good sign for either competitor. <laughs> let's just say that. It was not good. But Lucy got the points and she was the first one to, to grab the ring. So that worked out for Flamingo. And then... Alan versus Josh, and I'm like, oh, geez, Alan can't get a break. And I love, I love, I, I all respect to the producers that I was worried because Alan did fantastic last season and kept losing by this small fraction. I noticed that last season was driving me crazy. I'm like, Alan's doing amazing, especially considering the size of him, and he moves so fast and so great. He's one of my favorite ninjas, and the guy can't catch a break. And I thought. They're going to say he's 0-4, and that doesn't really tell the whole story, but they did. They gave him his props that, you know what, he was right in there every time and just kept coming up just a tiny fraction short. Yeah, I'm glad that they highlighted that, and he got that uh, that love. Uh, good for him. And I I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see him, especially because he's one of the better, faster big men of the entire sport. You know, he he's quite large, and he's, he flies like a like a linebacker, man. Yeah, I love him because you know what? As far as the the two hundred plus pounders, there's not a whole lot of them. So yeah, I gotta I gotta root for him. He is he's really cool to watch go. And he ended up winning. He got his he finally broke his streak. He ended up beating Josh Levin out, which I was I was honestly didn't have a whole lot of hope for him because I figured Josh Oof. would kill it at this. Yeah, I was floored. Um, Josh Levin. He he got hung up on a few little things. Um, he's got more of a technical approach rather than a speedy approach, and I think people sleep on that. But um, it, it showed, unfortunately, in the wrong way with this run. But 
you know, I'm I I feel like Josh Levin's the type where he's going to learn from his mistakes and the next time we see him tackle similar obstacles, he's going to do far better. So that led to JB versus Did I not even mention JB? Wow, poor JB. So no. I didn't even go through this team fully because poor JB. JB Douglas on Flamingo was the third member who we didn't even mention because so stuck on Lucy Romberg. They barely mentioned him, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... But he did pretty well. Well, okay. So first run, JB versus Joe. He's he called it. He's like, you know what, Alan? I, you know, I want to go up against Joe, which I thought was really cool that for a rookie to be like, you know what? Well, he's kind of not a rookie to ninja, but he was a rookie to team ninja. Yeah, good for him. He's going against one of the top ninjas in the sport. So, um, you know, th- that takes a lot of self-confidence, and I- I'm always up on people that can do that. Yeah, but unfortunately, on his first run, he ended up falling on the Ring of Fire. His fingers got stripped hitting that second notch, which we've seen more than once. It's definitely something a lot of them aren't expecting the amount of force that comes down. If they jump over that first notch on the Ring of Fire, the second one will hit their hands so hard they're not quite ready for it, so... Fortunately, learned his, or well, I should say, fortunately, he learned his lesson on that first trip because it was really, I was a little surprised, but they let him go up again uh, the second time versus Joe. I did not see that coming. Yeah. I was like, oh boy. I thought that was actually kind of a poor decision until I saw him move. It was actually a really, really good race. I don't know, Rich. I, I don't think I would have made that decision because. Like, he just ran and he might be winded, but he really didn't get that far. Yeah. And it seems like Keneally w- really was out of breath, like, a lot. So maybe this was the right decision now that I'm, that I'm processing it in my head, man. Do you think they made the right choice? I do. I, and I think Alan had some insight being, you know, they trained together and stuff. So he knew he knew JB could do it. it just a matter of him. Uh, getting it all getting, through. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Figuring it out a little bit more. And uh, he did really well. Like, he obviously he's going against one of the top ninjas. There's only so much you can do. Joe is amazing, but uh, he went ahead on the flywheels and he was up, he was going up that wall. It looked like he was going to win, but Joe just beasted the end of that course to, to hit that buzzer just ahead of him. Yeah. And this particular run, I want everybody to rewatch because this particular run highlights something I always say is the most important thing with these type of competitions which really isn't, yeah, you need to be athletic and fast and everything, but it's all about technique. And these two competitors did very creative things on this course that really brought them ahead of the other competitor. Now, the moment that Joe Morosky gets far ahead of JB, it's on the the ring of fire. And the thing is, is that Joe Morosky, he takes a unique approach to this obstacle where he goes on the side, holds his body up very tight against the ring. And he doesn't really like throw himself forward. Like everybody that else grabs the, the ring, throws themselves into the ring forward and they're holding going down the ring, um, holding up themselves kind of like a pull up. Right. And just going forward. With him, he's off on the side holding it tight, and he stops at the top and then slowly goes down. And what that does is what every single notch that there is that trips you up, he's able to very easily hop over it very quickly because he's so connected to that ring in a very, I guess, creative uh, technique and approach to it. And that's how he was able to fly through that and get far past JB. Now, the moment that JB gets past Joe Morosky, he does something that's very unique that a lot of competitors took wind of afterwards, and they, they adopted this technique. Whereas on that final ring of, or what's that obstacle called, man? The flywheels. Where you're like gripping flywheels, yeah. So on the final f- flywheel, it, it kind of goes on its own axis, and it takes time to lache and build up your lache. Rather than doing that, from the second to the third, he grabs onto it, pulls it back. That way, the swing is already there, and therefore, he can swing to the pad from one single lache rather than building up momentum with, like, three different tries kind of like what joe is doing so in both instances they use they adopted a unique approach and you know very creative technique to get ahead of the other competitor and that's what really makes a difference when it comes to team ninja warrior and american ninja warrior and i love to see it it was brilliant Rewatch this particular run guys and you'll see what i'm talking about where they they adopted these techniques to really get past the competitors and then it was kind of a wash up that that um, particular warped wall, and Joe Morosky just had a little bit better technique. 
technique where he ran up it and he stopped at the top of the warped wall already in a pull like a boosted position where he can just grab his legs over and grab the thing whereas his jb had to pull himself up and then you know bring itself over so all of this very fast happening but it was all about that technique that got them through yeah well said and there is my run breakdown for the day. <laughs> so Joe ended up winning for his team uh, in the same way that Carson had in the last round. So that meant that Flamingo would be facing Fast Cats in the uh, the next round. Battles of the awful names. <laughs> yeah. So the first matchup we had JB versus Kevin. So this is JB's third run in a row, which I don't know why Alan didn't go first. Ooh. Props to that guy. That is not easy. <laughs> like that. That's asking a lot of a competitor. Yeah, that seemed like the time that Allen should have been going first. Um, it was a solid race, though. JB did really well, but Kevin got a crazy fast time, 35 seconds. He just blew through it. And JB was just behind him, so, I mean, he still did well. There was no questioning he still did well, but uh, just wasn't quite fast enough. Yeah, I mean, w- when you're going com- against a competitor that beats the record for the entire season of speed i mean (laughs) you can't really you really can't criticize too much you know yeah and then we had a fast forward which we haven't had very many if any this season they fast forwarded the run between lucy and joy uh where lucy ended up falling on the cargo net and that explains why (laughs) yeah i mean there's there's no point if if you fall that that early and you're getting in the later point like part of the uh, episode it, it sucked to see, but, you know, that that's pretty good editing right there. So that meant that it was 1-1 one, one between the teams, which meant for the first time this episode, we would not have a tie-breaking round no matter what happened. It came down to just the uh, two captains running, Allen versus Karsten, to see uh, who moved on. And uh, this was not this was not a close race. This was not a, a meeting of equals. Karsten Ooh. just destroyed him at this run alan wasn't even on the flywheels when karsten finished this run i don't like i don't even think he was on the bridge part yet like the springs i mean the karsten was just beast mode good for this guy so full of energy just brilliant i mean this guy just i I can't say enough about this guy he really showed why like what he's capable of and man that was a performance for the season man yeah so that meant that they were at Flamingo was out, unfortunately, and that led to Storm Team versus Team Alpha. I'm happy about that. Both teams were very strong. I mean, these were the two teams that should have been in the relay. And um, say what you want about the team captains kind of like, you know, um, shouldering a lot of the brunt of the teams. I mean, these were two very strong teams, and I was really excited to see what they like, how they would match up in the in the finale or the final relay. Didn't we kind of know, though? I mean, these this is the tale of the two types of teams. Like, this speaks exactly to what you were talking about. Like, we have the team that's completely relying on the the captain and the one that really kind of can't, not to be too rude, but it, it just hasn't worked out very well for them. I mean, exactly what you're saying. If we're, we're talking about if the team captains weren't um, put in such high regard, Team Alpha would probably be in the relay, right? Because there's only one member of that team that really was a uh, a hindrance, and unfortunately, that was the team captain, and that's why they weren't in the relay. But if you look at like overall how many matchups they won, I mean, they did pretty well for themselves. Okay, so let's go through it one run by run here. Let's let's see how it played out. And I mean, we have Josh versus Dylan to kick it off. I I, I don't know. Dylan just I don't know. Sprouted wings. He just he just he, <laughs> he, I, I don't know what he was doing. But it was amazing to watch. He flew over bits of the Ring of Fire in a way I didn't know was possible. He did some crazy move on the floating tiles that looked like he he was Mario. And then yep. he completed the whole course in 33 seconds. That was crazy, crazy run. It was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, Dylan, Dylan was one of my new favorites just from that run. I loved it. Uh, then we had Alyssa versus Casey. Casey ends up missing the transition of the cargo net. And then, then Alyssa falls in the floating tiles and Casey wins by just completing that obstacle. Like Alyssa was, is such a strong competitor. Like she, is this the part where we have to talk about Alyssa Beard? And I, I hate saying this, but what happened here, man? I mean, we all have our, uh, 
we all have our, our days where we have a tough times. And unfortunately, Lisa Beard, this was the one time where, um, she's, she's making me really worried about them in the finale where you, you can't have a team member be that much of a hindrance. I mean, yeah, you can, you can have, uh, she's not the team captain, so the rest of her team can hold her up, but she's got to start figuring out whatever is going on. Maybe she's injured, but it didn't look like it was a physical issue. It was more mental lapses of judgment. And she kept making these mistakes. And um, it was hard to see because she's very, very talented. Yeah, we know that. And I mean, we know Alyssa's strong. I mean, she went on to win the National Ninja League this year. So we have to keep in mind that this was filmed last last summer. So hopefully she got it straightened out before the the finals, like you said, because she just didn't do so well in the preliminaries here and uh joe and josh were able to kind of pick up the slack joe especially we're kind of getting ahead to the finals here a little bit but yeah this was this was not a good sign i I was expecting her to do well in the second race i was actually thinking she would beat casey but uh and she did get ahead but she just just had a slip up on the floating tiles unfortunately yeah but this is a type of competition where these small mistakes are going to catch up and uh you know, add up. So I just really hope in the finale she can figure out whatever is going on. Uh, maybe it was just nerves or something. I mean, it was f- maybe her first time on this course. Hopefully she, you know, um, she can figure out all those mental issues, uh, lapses that she's got. Um, Cause I'm really high up on this girl. She, as you said, she won national ninja league, which is no small feat whatsoever. I mean, talk about stacked competition. <laughs> yeah. So we, we know she's talented. Um, just need needs to put it all together. Yeah, man. I I, I don't know what what happened. But with that said, Casey Cadenzaro, I believe, uh, as you said, she's still undefeated, right? She is. I believe she is the only female undefeated, and good on her. Casey Cadenzaro, the little engine that could. Haters can hate, but she's still beast boating. I think Megan's still undefeated too. If I'm not mistaken. Ah, uh, good point, man. Yep, yep. Yeah. That that's right. Um, Talk. Oh man, we need to have Casey versus Megan. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. This next run, so you you wanted everybody to watch jo, uh, Joe's run earlier uh, versus JB. This is the run that I think people need to take a look at because Brent versus Joe here. Brent gets tied up early on, and Joe cruises through this whole course. Now, he gets a time that's under 32 seconds, but you would know it by looking at him. Like he, Oh, yeah. He has technique in a way that is just uh, it's just next level like how do you even describe the way he can move through these courses and make it look effortless but so fast like i just Dude, this is yeah this is what we always say right like joe morowski he's the guy he's so different from the rest of the field where he makes it look so incredibly effortless like you, you don't even feel, like it feels like he's not even running right rich it feels like he's jogging through this thing but yet he still posts like the fastest time not of this episode but the entire competition how how yeah compare that to the one earlier we talked about dylan where he's like just springing over things and like, it's just like going at this crazy pace or karsten looking like he's just running for everything he's worth and you look at joe he's like uh Pepe Le Pew chasing after the cat, right? Like he's always just springing <laughs> along and the cat's just going like a complete lunatic. That's, that's Joe on the course. He is the Pepe Le Pew of team Ninja warrior. He's just chilling, man. It looks like he's just jogging through it. You know, I will, might as well like run over to the side stands, grab a burger during his run, you know, <laughs> and still like finish the whole thing in, in record speed. I don't know, man. Uh, it, it's, it's quite amazing and fantastic to just watch this guy run. Uh, Joe Morowski, he is a particular competitor that's unlike almost the ent- like the rest of the field, and it is such a privilege to watch him whenever he runs. It- it's really special to see. Yeah, yeah. So that meant that here we are again, tiebreaker round for the third out of the four <laughs> matchups this episode, which is why they had to fast forward the other one. We get to see Joe versus Brent again instead of Dylan. Like, what the heck? Like. I, I who decided this? Oh, that is a bad idea. Ooh, I love Brent. I I really love him, but th- this is not the competition for him to like. I don't like. It's not time to put your ego in the forefront or whatever was going on here. 
and I say that only because the the announcers were building it up like right. you know as a captain you gotta like put put you know put it on your shoulders but I'm like oh no don't like you, you have to look at history you have to look at records of how people have been doing this day and really and like figure out what's the best option here not only is his teammate more fresh and ready to go but he's performed a whole lot better on these on these particular obstacles this was all around a poor poor decision yeah dylan just got done doing a 33 second run an amazing run like a short time ago and you just ran like even if nothing else you're not as fresh as he is you know he's fast like i i I don't understand the decision at all other than wanting some some redemption which i get that it's not the time for that. (laughs) it's not the run not against like this is not this is not the first like like uh session you know this is the knockout round of the second go through this is not the time yeah get your redemption on the next episode yeah it, it was it was not a good idea and it definitely did not work out because you know falling on the ring of fire like that was painful to watch yeah, it's painful and really not a good look for Brent. Um, I, I really hope he he rebounds. Like we know he's so good on A and W and everything, but Team Ninja Warrior has not been a good situation for him. And um, I think there there needs to be some ego checks or whatever is going on there. And he cannot be the team captain next season. He cannot be. I love you, Brent. I I, I can't say it enough. He is such a great guy in real life. So cool. So awesome. But he cannot be the team captain. All right. So that led us to the relay showdown between Storm Team and Fast Cats. Oh, what a what a roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What happened here? Yeah, I don't know. It's Captain Well, for <laughs> Captain versus Captain here. Well, we got it. We got it at the very beginning. I mean, the the switch up with the fact that Joe Morowski went in the middle of the relay and uh, put everything on uh, Josh Levin's shoulders for the final portion, I felt was incredibly brilliant. I really felt that showed a lot of respect and um, a lot of promise in Josh Levin that he got that from one of the top ninjas in the entire sport. It was a perfect decision. I mean, Josh Levin, he, he, the thing that everybody talks about is just how fast he is when it comes to the upper body. I mean, he's a he's a whatever you call it, speeding climb, uh, rock climber, you know. So like this guy, this guy is made or kind of kid is made for the for the upper body obstacles and going fast. I felt like that was brilliant placement. Uh, both teams like very thumbs up on it. When they can put everything together, I mean, if Alyssa Beard can figure things out, I mean, Storm Team can really do a lot of damage when it comes to the relay. Now, the question is, will they get to the relay in the fin- in the finale? Who knows? But if they can get there and Alyssa, you know, just she can go slow. Just don't fall in the water. You know, I, I feel like they can do a lot of damage. That's a good point, because I, I, we know Alyssa has it in her for no, no joke whatsoever. So that makes this team extremely dangerous, really, when it comes down to this relay. Yeah, because Joe can do any of those tricky, fast, lower body obstacles, and Josh can go like beast mode through the upper body stuff, right? Yeah. So as long as Alyssa doesn't fall, like they've got it in the well, not in the bag, but they they definitely have a good shot at it. Mm-hmm. Which is why I picked them, guys. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the key point being, as long as Alyssa doesn't fall, because unfortunately that's what she did here. Yes. She fell in the cargo net, and that was. Oh. Uh, I thought it was I over. Thought, I, like, I was over, right? Like, we, we've talked about this so many times. That 10-second deficit is killer. There's no way getting back from it. And to this point, nobody ever did. First of all, I couldn't believe she fell in the water because I thought she had it. I mean, she's grabbing onto the, like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> this isn't the time to just go out and make these insane risks. You have to go fast, but you have to play it a little bit safe because at this point, you have to know like that 10 second deficit is just nails in the coffin for the team. So, uh that was really hard and I think you could see because it happened right in front of Joe Morowski, you could see the competitor in him. Like you can kind of see him just going like, "No!" <laughs> <laughs> if you rewatch it and yeah, uh, I I was right there with him. Yeah, I think it's funny because uh early in the episode when they were interviewing Joe, he said, he goes, I think I'm the most competitive person out here. And I've said that before that you can see it in Joe's eyes. When we look at the skills competition, when they put that warped wall up there and he's running at it, I think if there, if, 
if it's all determined on who wants it the most, I think Joe wins every single time. <laughs> yeah, and he tries to put on a brave face, but you can tell he is not happy when he loses. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. And this team competition, unfortunately, he does have to lean on his teammates. And uh, to have Alyssa fall must have just kicked him right in the midsection, let's say. It was right in front of him, too. It could have been more perfect for a viewer. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, but he was able to make up some of the time as fast as uh, Kevin was on Fast Cats. Joe was able to kind of close the gap a little bit. Uh, and then Josh was able to kind of tighten up the rest of it. And they hit that invisible ladder. At the same time, we had a race on the Invisible Ladder like we haven't had really up until this point. Like we we we've had some kind of close ones where they've gotten on around the same time, but not like this, not at this pace where they're both just going frantic on it, trying to get up it. It was great, Mm -hmm. and it wasn't a it wasn't a situation where we have one high level like speeding rock climber and one guy that just uh, like is so slow that the guy catches up. Right? I mean, Carson was going very fast he was flying through these till the very end but like josh levin was just so next level that he was able to come from behind and surpass him by barely just a little i mean you're talking about two extremely high level upper body experts going at a very very fast pace that would blow away pretty much like maybe 98 percent of most competitors right and um, it was really a treat to see two of the guys in their prime in, in, in like basically their wheelhouse and the upper body obstacles just going at it. It was really fun to see. So in the end, Storm Team did end up winning. So that meant that you and I are both now one and one for our picks. Yes. For Ninja Warrior. We both have one moving on to the finals. I'm happy. I just needed one, man. I just needed one. Yeah. With that said, I, I'm still I got all my faith in real life beast. But uh one of my teams made it. Oh, there's still a shot, man. There's still a chance. Yeah, so you... Still, neither of our teams are going to win. It's going to be Team TNT or something. But, um, <laughs> you know. Uh... Well, we've got Storm Team for you, and we've got Iron Grip for me in the finals. But both of our, your, uh, both of our first picks got knocked out. Party Time and G-Force. That's fine. I, I really said, like, um, when I was making the picks, I, I like, the th- my three teams were very much kind of equal. I really didn't put much placement in my top team as like being, you know, the end all be all. Right. I kind of did rank mine uh, and my third one was the one that came through so far. Let's take a look. Speaking of, and it's kind of funny how this works out. There, There's two episodes left in the preliminaries. And boy, these matchups. <laughs> oh, boy. These matchups, there's no team where I'm like, oh, yeah, they're just going to blow through the competition. Nope. Yeah. So your team, uh, the last team on your list comes up next week we've got real life beasts uh, are gonna be facing the ballers so uh, let's run through the four let's teams we're gonna kind of name the yeah. people off because i don't know if everybody obsesses over it quite as much the real life beasts are drew dreschel james mcgrath and erica cook fantastic incredibly team. strong team gotta be one of the favorites to win just like they were last year yeah, both James McGrath and Drew Dreschel are so incredibly well-rounded. They've been training for years, and they are two of the top ninjas. I mean, they are very, very fast in not just lower body, but upper body. So they can they can really do a lot of damage in pretty much any obstacle that's thrown at them. And Erica Cook is no joke. She's going to be the uh, foundation of their team, and she's going to hold her own against a lot of the top female ninjas. So I'm really high up on this team, obviously, but... um. Yeah, we, we've seen, unfortunately, a lot of teams that are very strong, like G-Force and stuff, just small lapses of judgment makes them fail. But, you know, the, this team has the pedigree to make it all the way. And I mean throughout everything. Yep. And there's no weaknesses on a team, for sure. And the teams they were facing will be the Ballers. That's Lauren Ball's team with Paul Casimir and Mei Ling Huang. Paul Casimir and Lauren Ball. Very, very fast. Paul Casimir, I'm I'm so happy to see him. Doesn't get the, the like, the, like I guess, praise that he deserves. He's been here, like, running for years and years, and he's always been one of the top ninjas. Uh, amazing competitor. Mei Ling Huang, I gotta admit, she's a big question mark for me. I just don't know much about her. We'll see. Uh, then we had Stratus Faction. Uh, some of everybody's fan favorites here. We've got Ryan Stratus, Mike Bernardo, and Grace Sims. It's weird that Grace Sims and Brett Sims aren't on the same team. <laughs> like, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's a little strange. Uh, with that said, I mean, 
this is a team all about passion. This is the team where like the internet community is going to be all behind them. Probably. I mean, these guys are diehard fans from Sasuke to American Ninja warrior. Um, these guys are always fun. And if anything, uh, these teams are going to, these, these guys are going to be team TV. I mean, these guys are going to be really fun, really animated. And finally we have the breakfast club, John Alexis jr. Noel Reyes and Jesse LeBrac. And this is the team I am very worried about. <laughs> <laughs> this, this team, I am like, oh boy, because uh, John Alexis Jr. can be a, play a really big, important role in this competition. He is obviously incredibly tall, but he's very fast for his size and can do very well on upper body obstacles. And if we have an, op- an upper body obstacle, you know, the, the ones that switch out um, right before the warped wall, if we have anything that involves really big wingspans, this guy can play a really big spoiler for anybody. So watch out for John Alexis Jr. Um, he can really play spoiler to this entire competition. And obviously, I mean, the guy... Uh, whereas a lot of competitors are going to be winded going up that warped wall, this guy could probably just walk up to it <laughs> yeah. and like not even jump and just like grab onto the top. Yeah, he he's going to pl- be a very big spoiler, I think, for for this team. And obviously, Jesse Lebrecht. I mean, I don't see any female beating her. She's so 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 talented. Um, she's going to be incredible. And from from looks of it, I mean if she plays team captain and goes on the captain run, I mean, she's really going to make up a lot of points for that team. Yeah. Yeah, of these four teams, I mean, I have trouble picturing anyone beating out the real life beasts, but it happened last year. That's the thing. I if if real I see La Breakfast Club maybe being a team that can knock out real life beasts if something happens, but if real life beasts makes it to the to the relay, I don't see anybody beating them in that point. Yeah. Yeah, my money's on Real Life Beast. Looking through this, there's a lot of my favorite competitors in here. I love watching these guys run. But uh, I just, it, it, we've seen the power of the captain in this episode we just watched. And I can't, I can't see any captain pulling through better than Drew. Well, it's not just that. It's that, you know, when, when there's a situation where maybe there's, you can like switch up the team, like, you have the tiebreaker and then for some reason something happens and then you you have to choose between your team captain or your your um your secondary so to speak to to run the final run the problem is for the other teams is that you have somebody just equally as good as Drew Dreschel and James McGrath. So it's a one-two punch where maybe if Joe Morosky had to go both runs and hold his own for the team, you know, Drew Dreschel, if he's winded, can just sub James McGrath in equally and just do just as good. So it's a really tough, tough thing for any team to go against those that one-two punch. With that said, the one team that we didn't talk about much, which is the Ballers, because we didn't talk about them, they're probably going to win. So, yep, you know, that's, the, that. that's where your money should be if you're a betting person. <laughs> <laughs> the one we're overlooking is the, the way to go. But we'll uh, yep. we'll see how it goes. It's going to be a fun one to watch. All right, so that is it for this episode. Thank you all for listening. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can reach me at rich at ninjapodcast.com. I am at ninjapodcast on both Twitter and Instagram. And Bajan, how can they reach you? Hit me up at Twitter and Instagram at Bijan151 if you want to see me do some random obstacles, you know, and yeah, have a good time. That's B-I-J-A-N-151. Hit me up, guys. All right. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you have a fantastic week. Peace and love, y'all.